Alrighty. Well, hey, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live on YouTube. My name is Patrick. I work at the aquarium here in social media. Hello to everyone watching the replay and hello to anyone who may be tuning in live right now. Give us a thumbs up if in the chat if you are there. But we are here behind the scenes of the Discovery Labs right now because we have something very exciting going on. Spring has spawned here in our Discovery Labs and we have a lot of animals that are releasing their gametes, broadcast spawning as it were. Hey, Epic Sandwich. Hey, Tom. Thanks for being there. We are watching the next generation of sea urchin here being made at the aquarium. So we've got here some clear water. Hey, Chelsea. We got some clear water here with these urchins that are more interested in nomming there on some of that kelp. And over here, yeah, Cuttlefish Commander, here's the spawning. Look at that. You can barely see here. Here, if I put my hand on the other side, you can see it. And if I put my hand on that other side, it's all gone. Those are all some urchins that are spawning here at the moment. So Emily has moved over there to the other side so you Black can just kind of see. Black shirt on the other side, you can see Emily just disappears here into the baby soup here, little baby sea urchins that are going to be uh, out there on the currents, out there in the wild. These little urchin babies will become what's known as a pluteus larva. Hey, Polly, thanks for joining us. They're gonna be known as a pluteus larva before they settle out on the seafloor. But if we look kind of straight down, you can see just how milky the water is becoming. So you can kind of think of this as sort of uh, ocean pollen. Hey, Ida, thanks for joining us. You can think of this as ocean pollen, right? So you've got these animals releasing their gametes into the ocean currents, hoping that uh, they get lucky out there and meet another gamete and become a larva. Very, very few of these will survive. Maybe a fraction of a percent will make it to adulthood. But now is that time the spring spawn is upon us there in this exhibit. And if I look over here to the right, we've got something set up here. We'll see if it works for us here. A little bit, a little bit, a little bit. All right. So if you can see those little bugs that are flitting about, those appear to me to be the red abalone sperm there from the red abalone that are over here on this side. And there's Emily there. She's looking for more spawning events. If you uh, follow us on Instagram, that's going to be a lot of Emily's work. But if we look straight down right here, you can see this sort of greenery right there. So here's some clear, fresh water, no gametes in here. And then here's where there's been a lot of release there from this particular lady. She's been laying her eggs here all afternoon. And here we go. We've got this sort of green water right there. Those are little baby abalone that are going to be made right there. So clear water, green. There's our red abalone. Clear water, green water filled with those eggs and sperm here at the moment. And then over here are some more sea urchins. You can see just how milky that water is. So again, the fresh water that's been filtered here directly from the Monterey Bay, that delicious life-sustaining force of all the animals here. And then boom, look at that, completely covered, completely opaque there with the urchin spawn. Now, if you enjoy eating sea urchins out there, you enjoy eating sea urchin eggs. That's known as uni. And so here we've got some sperm in the water, the white stuff, and the uni tends to be the orange that you might be familiar with from your sushi platter. And if we walk over here, we've also got some spawning here in these sea stars. You can see, there we go, look at that. So if you're looking here in front of us, you see all that wispy stuff coming out. Those are all sea star gametes coming out here from these two ochre stars. Look at that, just spawning as hard as it can, these animals sort of save it up here and go all at once to coordinate that reproduction out there in the wild. Again, these will get fertilized at a distance. Those eggs and sperm will combine together and then they'll probably drift for hundreds of miles uh, depending on what kind of species you are, what kind of animal you are before they settle out somewhere. So this is a really important time for these animals to expand their range or to at least have that next generation there are going to intentionally mix the sperm and egg spawn. You know, I'm not sure if anyone here in the Discovery Labs is gonna do it, but we do have some folks that are working with other organisms like our tube anemones, and we're gonna see about potentially growing those. So culturing animals 
is definitely something that we do here at the aquarium. It seems like tube anemones are a good candidate. Not sure about these particular organisms, but we'll certainly have those larvae likely on display at our tiny drifters exhibit, whether from the wild or from the aquarium. But anyway, just a very exciting time to see this. So there's been speculation that these are coordinated with these spawning events are coordinated with the moon or with water temperature, a chemical signal, but everyone kind of knows when to go all at once when the going gets good. Get those larvae out there into the water so that the rest of the year you've got a better chance there at having more of these. Oh, that was a big plume right there. Hey, Dragon Slayer 999 thanks for joining us here live at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Oh, that's just so exciting to see. Look at all of that. Very cool. So again, sort of like uh, ocean pollen, if you think about it, these animals releasing their sperm and eggs there into the water. And that broadcast spawning is a very different, uh, it's a very different reproductive strategy than say what dolphins have, where dolphins are just like us, where they're having just a few young at a time, they raise them up until they're old enough to be pretty much good to go on their own. These animals do something completely different. And for those of you studying biology, that's the difference between R selection and K selection. R selection just means, well, you got a real big number of babies going out there. Fractions of a percent are gonna survive to adulthood. You're just kinda spawning as much as you can. Definitely quantity over quality. And then a K selected animal, like uh, a dolphin, is gonna have very few babies nowhere near anything like this and gonna raise those up to adulthood. So completely different strategy and similar to those land plants there with that pollen out there in the water. Out in the air and here in the water, these plankton that are going by. Very cool. Well, all right, YouTube, that's pretty much all we wanted to show you. That We've got this spawning event happening here. Uh, it'll probably be wrapped up here within the next day or so. Uh, it's been going on since Saturday. But uh, anyway, some very exciting stuff and another part of that seasonality here of the Monterey Bay. Always something new happening out there in the ocean and right now it's making the next generation of these reef dwelling critters. So thanks so much for following us here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium here live on YouTube. Thanks for watching Ida, Polly, thanks for being there. We will see you again soon at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your day wherever you are in the world. Thanks everyone.